You're listening to The Taylor Marshall Show, episode 12. Today we're going to talk about the theology of creativity, why you need to be more creative. Thank you for tuning in to The Taylor Marshall Show. This is the podcast for everyone who wants to take their faith to the next level. My goal today is to challenge you to rediscover your creativity. Have you ever wanted to write a novel? Maybe early in life you painted pictures, you played the guitar, you were working on a screenplay. Do you want to start a charity? All of us have creative urges, but in the hustle of life, we neglect them. We neglect being creative, and yet God is creator. And we can't create out of nothing, but he gives us the ability to take his creation and to make something out of it. And I firmly believe that God takes great delight in seeing his children, his creatures, becoming creative. And here's the thing about creativity. All of us have certain gifts. And if you're not being creative, you're cheating all the rest of us because we don't get to experience what you could be creating. You know, think about if Michelangelo or Bach or any of these great artists didn't create what they created. We wouldn't be able to enjoy these wonderful gifts. So today I'm going to give you a three-step process on how you can overcome the resistance towards creativity and then release your creative powers. But first, this podcast is brought to you by the New St. Thomas Institute. Every month we explore new theological and practical topics at a much deeper level than we do here on the podcast or over at the blog And today, I'm really excited. We released two golden video courses. One was on logical fallacies. It's part one. And we go through seven ways in which people make logical mistakes when they're having debates or discussions, how you can identify them and how you can avoid them. And then the second video that we put up this morning was an interview that I did with David Palmer on how to read the Summa Theologiae in one year. Dave is a layman. He's a bright guy. He's a really good friend. And he's read the Summa, Theologia, get this, three times. So I sat down with him and we made a video interview on how he did it and how you can read the entire Summa Theologia of Thomas Aquinas. So if you're interested, please go over to NewStThomas.com, NewStThomas.com with Saint spilled out. And if you're already a member, please check out these videos. I think you're going to love them. Now, we'll begin, as we usually do, with our Proverb of the Week. And our Proverb of the Week is Proverbs chapter 30, verses 7 through 9. So it's actually three verses, but they all go together, and it it goes like this. Quote, Two things I ask of you, O Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. Unquote. The author here in Proverbs asks God for two things. The first, to keep falsehood and lies away from him. The second, this is really interesting. This is a great attitude to have. He says, God, don't make me too rich, because then I might forget you, and I don't want to forget you. But God, also, don't make me too poor, because then I might be tempted to steal. So keep me moderated. Keep me in the mean, in the middle, so that I can be faithful to you. So I'd encourage you this week to think that way. Keep away from falsehoods, and then also ask God, to put you right there in the middle. So you can take care of your family and your needs, but not forget the Lord 
or be tempted in a state of poverty. Usually we look at our tip of the week, and I'm going to keep this short because I'm going to do something different this week. I'm going to do um, not really a saint of the day, but a little short story about saints. I've had a lot of people tell me how we love it when you say something about saints. And so we're going to just kind of try this. We're going to pilot it out, and uh, hopefully it won't make the podcast too much longer. So before we get to our saint story today, and you're going to love it, it's a great one, is our tip of the week. And the tip of the week this week is a very simple one. I always try to keep them really easy. And this one's called sweating. That's right, sweating. Opening your pores and sweating. I think it's important every day to sweat. Now you may be thinking, what is he talking about, sweating? Look, there's two reasons why you need to sweat every day, which means you have to get up and move around and exercise. One, it just opens your pores, the toxins come out, it's good for your skin, it's good for your organs, it's good for your physiology, all right? And secondly, when you're sweating, it means you're doing something aerobic, something cardiovascular, which means your heart is pumping and your lungs are breathing. And for me, that just oxygenates my entire body, but especially, this is really important, my brain My brain is my most important organ. It's your most important organ, too. And you need to flush that organ every day with a lot of blood and a lot of oxygen. And the only way you can do that is if you get up and start sweating. So jog, stairmaster, I don't care what you do. Every day you need to start sweating and you need to start flushing your body, especially your brain, with fresh, bright, red oxygenated blood and move all those toxins out and get all cleaned up. You know, I know if I'm doing a podcast or I'm writing, if I don't work out, if I don't start sweating and moving around and oxygenating this brain, it's just not going to be as good. My creativity is not going to be at the level it should be. We're going to talk about creativity later on. So I would encourage you to get out there and sweat it. Okay. Now we're going to move to the saint story of the day. And it's somewhat related to Don Juan of Austria. He's the great hero of the Battle of Lepanto. He's the bastard son of the emperor, Charles V. But Charles V had a legitimate son, and that's King Philip II. And King Philip II's son was Don Carlos. And Don Carlos was a nasty character, um, very immature, uh, a lot of unusual behavior, definitely a, a confused young man. One night, Don Carlos, the heir apparent, fell down some stairs and landed on his head, and his head swole up like a giant pumpkin. He was unconscious, he was paralyzed, and he had gone blind. So clearly what was going on here is he was having brain swelling, and they didn't know how to relieve uh, the swelling by by opening up the, the cranium. And in a moment of lucidity... He asked for the prayers of St. Didicus. Now, St. Didicus' feast day is tomorrow, November 13th. And the saint's body was apparently dug up and brought to the prince's room. And they placed one of Don Carlos's hand on the chest of the corpse of St. Didicus. And the, the prince fell asleep. He woke up several hours later, and he said he had a dream in which St. Didicus came to him and said he would not die, and the swelling went down immediately, and he was healed. The life of the prince was saved. Okay, it's very kind of a strange story there, but it gets even more interesting. So the father, Philip II, commissioned a robot, a clockwork model of St. Didicus that moved. That's right. It would pound the chest, as in the prayer to the Confidior, which we say at Mass. It would pound the chest and say, Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. And this robot or clockwork version of St. Didicus was some sort of, we don't don't know exactly, a votive offering to St. Didicus. Some people think it was used by King Philip II to promote the miracle of his son's recovery through the relics and intercession of St. Didicus, or it was just a portable model to teach people how to pray, to teach the Spaniards how to pray. I doubt that latter one. I think it's probably a votive offering. Anyway, you can see this um, clockwork robotic model 
of St. Didicus at the Smithsonian. So if you're there, check it out. That's the story of St. Didicus, a Franciscan friar whose relics healed the Prince of Spain. Have you ever created something and then you just didn't finish it? Maybe it was a woodworking project. Maybe it was a poem. Maybe it was a song. Maybe it was a painting. Along the way, you sort of either lost interest or what's more likely, other critical things happened that drew you away. Uh, Maybe you had children. Maybe you were married. Maybe um, a disease, a hardship, financial problems. Whatever it was, you were drawn away from your creative pursuit. Well, today we're going to go through a three-step process to rediscover that creativity. I like to think of myself as a creative guy. I write poems. I write songs. I've written two novels. I haven't published them. I hope to one day. One is a fictional account of the life of Abraham, and the other one is a fictional account of the life of St. George and St. Christopher and the dragon. Uh, I've written four nonfiction books. I tell my kids bedtime stories. I write a blog. I do these podcasts. I've created businesses. I've written curriculum. I've even created my own beers. So I'm really into this whole idea of being creative, being creative. A while back, I found a really good book that I'd recommend to you. Um, I don't endorse everything in the book. It's obviously not written from a Christian worldview. Um, And there's some things that I would object to in the book. So that's a big caveat, big warning there. But it's a book by Stephen Pressfield, and it's called The War of Art. Not the art of war, but the war of art. And in this book, he talks about um, breaking through the resistance, the resistance. And it's his belief, and I, I, I share this with him, anytime we try to do something great, like start a charity, start a business, uh, paint a portrait, write a guitar solo, whatever it is. Every time we try to do something great that stretches our creative powers, the resistance comes. He gives it the capital R, resistance. And these are what seems to be a preternatural force that works against us so we do not complete this creative project. It's the resistance. Often it's an inner dialogue in your own head that says something like, no one's going to want to read this novel. It's stupid. Or I should just give up on this blog. No one's going to read it. Or yeah, even if I spend money and time creating this painting, who's ever going to appreciate it? Or yeah, if I write this screenplay, people are going to laugh at me. And it's this negative self-doubting, right? This negative inner dialogue or inner talk that pushes us away from pursuing what we ultimately want to do. Now, I'll take a step back from Stephen Pressfield, and let's look at the theology of creativity. God is creator. It's one of the first things we say about God in the Apostles' Creed, in the Nicene Creed. The Bible begins with creation. And I think it was J.R. Tolkien, maybe it was C.S. Lewis, but I think it was Tolkien. Correct me, feel free to send me a note after you listen to this podcast if you know for sure. That stated that our creativity is a participation in God's creativity. In other words, we are made in God's image and likeness. We have an intellect and a will. And because of that, we can participate in creative behavior. So we can take a bunch of colors and create a painting, either of a place that actually exists or a place that doesn't exist. We could paint a picture of a pegasus or a unicorn or a liger or whatever it is, right? We can create sculptures, music, all kinds of things, uh, movements, a group of people with a common cause. We can take what seems to be nothing— and bring it together into something new. 
and that could be creating wine. It could be breeding red Angus cattle. It could be any kind of thing. All of us have different interests and different uh, gifts with regard to creativity. But I believe all of us, in order to be happy and to live out our vocation, need to have an element of creativity because that is one of the ways in which we relate to God. So here's the three steps in becoming more creative. And the first is identify what you're good at. So, you know, don't listen to this podcast and say, yeah, Taylor's right. I'm going to become a composer. I'm going to write orchestral pieces. Well, you know, if you're 65 and you don't know how to read music and you don't know how to play an instrument, that that dream is probably not going to happen, right? Or if you say, you know, I want to be an NFL football coach, right? Some things are just a little bit too far out at certain seasons in our life, okay? But there are other ones that are very tangible. What are you good at? Maybe get a sheet of paper out and write three things. What am I good at? What do I have at least some natural talent? Maybe it's music. Maybe it's writing. Maybe it's mechanical. You know, maybe your act of artistry or creativity is to rebuild a 19, you know, 69 Camaro. That's what you do well. And that's what's beautiful. That's where you use your skills and your creativity. All right. So you first of all, identify what am I good at and what, and where are my interests? The second step is to identify the resistance. Is the resistance towards you becoming more creative a person? Is it an environment? Is it that voice in your head that says you can never do it? Is it financial? Do you need more money to make this happen? Do you need more education? Do you need more training? Do you need to go and get a piano lesson to brush up? Think about what is the resistance. Again, on that same piece of paper, write out three things that are resistance, keeping you from being creative. I suspect that for 95% of the people listening to this podcast, the number one reason for resistance is nothing more than the voice in your head that says, you're lame, you're no good, people will laugh at you, it's not worth it. If you write that book, people will think it's stupid. For most of us, and I'll guarantee you, for me, That's the number one resistance. If I make a podcast, people will laugh at me. If I write the blog, they're going to find all my typos and make fun of me. Right? That's the voice that I hear in my head when I sit down at the keyboard. Right? And those of you who read my blog know there's a lot of typos on it. So I have a lot to be afraid of. Okay, so second, identify that resistance. And then third, Make the time. I've discovered in my life, if it does not go on my calendar, it will never happen. Never. It will never happen. I have to carve out the time. If you don't have a calendar, get a calendar and start using it. I like to use the Google calendar because it's live. My assistant can see it. My wife can see it. I can see it on my phone. I can see it on my computer. It's always there. And just say, you know, 30 minutes a week, are for playing the piano, and put it on there. Put it on your calendar. One hour a week is for watercolor painting, if that's your deal, right? And put it on there. And I'm going to make you a promise. You will become more fulfilled and more happy because the activity of your soul will become actualized. This is what Aristotle talks about, and this is especially what Thomas Aquinas talks about, Happiness comes from actualization, right? There's a lot of passivity in our soul, things that we want to be, things that could be, but when you actualize them, they actually do happen. And great happiness and satisfaction comes from completing a great work of creativity. So I'd encourage you to do these three things. Identify where you're creative, where you're good, that's number one. To identify your resistance, write it down on a sheet of paper and tell yourself and maybe tell God in prayer, I'm not going to allow this to hold me back. I'm just going to do it. 
And then third, make time for it and do it. And of course, all of these things dedicate to the greater glory of God, and he will rejoice and delight in your creativity because you are actualizing your image and likeness in God's image. You're being creative. So before we get to our Latin word of the week, I'd like to ask you, the listener, a question. I've been getting a lot of feedback on the podcast, and like I said earlier, people are interested in the saints, and they're interested in biographies. So people have been saying, can you please talk more about the saints? And just to give you some stats, so the most popular show so far that I've ever done on the podcast was the one on my opinion on Father Martin Luther. That had over 3,000 downloads. After that was How Do Saints Hear Us? That had 2,355 downloads. Uh, so people love those, right? That's, that's, the, that's the ones that people like. They like biography, and they like saints or anti-saints like Martin Luther. And so I'm thinking about maybe dropping the Q&A and doing a saints spot. The Q&A, honestly, is the hardest part of this podcast. Um, it takes uh, recording questions from other people, editing them, dropping them in. It's just a lot of work. Um, so if you would prefer, I could do a saint of the week or a biography of the week, if that's something you would like. Here's how you can tell me what you would prefer. We'll do a little vote. Go to my blog, taylormarshall.com forward slash show. TaylorMarshall.com forward slash Taylor Marshall Show. And if you could leave a comment, actually, I'm going to put a survey up there, okay? So I'll put a survey there, and you just click on the survey and say, I want more saints and biographies, or no, leave the QA. I like that, it's helpful. And whichever wins, that's what we'll go with, okay? So let me know. Again, it's TaylorMarshall.com forward slash Taylor Marshall Show. Okay, and now our Latin word of the week, it's a verb, creare, creare, it means to create, to create. Now, what I find interesting about this Latin word is it's related in its etymology to another Latin word, crescere, where we get the word crescent, like a crescent moon, or increase, increase, same etymological root there, which means to grow right, to come up from the earth like wheat or how the moon grows. And so to be creative includes this idea of growth. Do you want to grow as a person? Do you want to grow as a Christian? Do you want to grow as a Catholic? If so, there must be an element of creativity in your life. So thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe to it in iTunes. And I'd love it. I'd really appreciate it if you would rate it. Tons of you have rated it and given it five-star reviews. I thank you so much for that. It's tremendous. It's very encouraging to me. It helps me get over my resistance in making this podcast. So thank you for all who have subscribed and all who have rated this podcast over on iTunes. I am so grateful to you. And now, as our Lord Jesus Christ says, you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty.